Namaste. Welcome to class. Hopefully you had a nice night's sleep and are ready to just move a little. This morning, I, I've been thinking about the poses that we would build into just for you to know where we're going to go today. And I'd like to workshop a little bit, the triangle and reverse triangle. So we're going to be building to those for late, later on in the, at the end, toward the end of our asana practice together, okay? So for now, just take a nice, comfortable seat. We're going to do our warm up on the floor. Nice, comfortable seat. Make sure your sit bones are making contact with the floor. I have a pillow under my sit bones. A blanket is good, whatever feels appropriate if you need a little lift. Also, if your legs are hanging in space, putting a block under your knees to support the inner thighs is very important. So getting yourself nice and stable. So out of this stable base, feel the spine lift up like a chute coming out of the ground, just lifting toward, this, toward the sky. Let your shoulders be relaxed. Arms are soft, just resting your hands on your legs. So just taking a few breaths for a moment, conscientious breaths, inhaling, exhaling. Two more. Make your exhale a little bit longer than your inhale. One more. And then if you'd like, you can close your eyes or just dropping your gaze down toward the floor. Bringing the hands into the heart, Anjali Mudra. With gratitude, we salute all the great yoga masters. A special prayer of thanksgiving for Baba Hari Das. With joy, we recognize the excellent wisdom teachings of yoga, and with vigor, we dedicate ourselves to self-transforming practice. So you are the only one who can get in there and do self-transformation. Ask yourself what you need from your practice this morning. Usually the first thing that pops into your mind And then taking that thought and form it into a positive sentence as if it had already happened. And repeat this sankalpa, this intention to yourself three times. And then I'll chant one om representing the beginning, the end, and everything in between our creation. Exhaling the breath out, join me if you can. Um. And letting your eyes flutter open on an inhale. And just resting your hands for a moment uh, on your thighs, wherever they are, just a few circles around the femurs. So just rolling the torso all the way around the heads of the femurs and then back in the other direction. Just a couple, starting to warm up the legs. Good. And then go ahead and put your left hand down on the floor and reach the right arm up. Reach it all the way over, but keep active. Keep re reaching through the right hand. And then bend the left elbow, but keep your right sit bone firmly planted on the ground. Just getting some extension in your spine. And then press up until your elbow is straight, left elbow straight. And then open the arm into an open twist, a little bit out to the right side. The arm can be back behind you on the floor, anywhere that it's comfortable, just pressing into your low back so that you don't have it. Your low back is in its natural curve. Good, and then release the twist, come back to neutral, both hands neutral on the legs. Great, and then the right hand, just place it on the floor, raising the left arm up, flip the palm away from you, and then reach over, make a diagonal line, keep the arm very active, and then keeping the left sit bone firmly on the ground, bend your right elbow, bend, bend, Good, and then come out of it a little bit and open your torso and your chest over to the left side. Your hand can go back behind you. It can press into your low back. 
wherever you are, just breathing. Good, and then release the twist, both arms again, down to the legs for just a moment. And then kind of a seated cat cow. So exhale, pull the belly to the spine and curl your spine. Just let your hands be in your lap and inhale, roll the shoulders back and down and look toward the ceiling. Exhale, roll the shoulders forward, curl, and inhale, roll the shoulders up, back, and down. One more. Good, and then bringing your spine into neutral. So let's go ahead into all fours, just getting yourself up and ready into all fours. If you have your something underneath your hips, move it out of the way. <clears throat> Good. So just finding yourself initially with your wrist underneath your shoulders and your knees right underneath your hip sockets. Okay. Good. So the same, the same movement of our cat that we just did seated. So exhaling, press the spine toward the ceiling. Tuck the chin into the chest. And as you inhale, come forward, tuck in the other direction. So just working the spine and maximum extension and maximum flexion. Good. One more. And then come into neutral, and we're going to take our left foot out by our left hand. So just walk your left foot out by your left hand. Good. And then take your hips back toward your right heel as you begin to straighten the left leg. Just straighten as much as you'd like. You can bring your hands, walk them back close to the knee. Just bending the knee. Hips are square to the front of your mat. Good. And then walk the hands back up slowly close to the foot. Bend the knee. Stack it. Good. Put all of your upper body weight into your hands, not into your knee. And just take the knee a little bit out over the second and third toe. Not far, but your weight is in your hands, not in your knee. And then bring it back, stack it exactly, and then release it. Good. Placing your hands again on the floor and take one cat pose. So arching in both directions. And then finding yourself in neutral. Good. And now bringing your right foot over by your right hand. Knee right over the ankle, completely over the ankle. Good. And then taking your hips squarely back toward your heel in the back. Just walk your hands back. Try to keep the toes on the floor for now. Just keep the toes on the floor this first time. Notice the back of the leg, the hamstrings, just how it's feeling. Good. And then walk yourself back up. Stack the knee right over the ankle. Perfectly safe. And then shift any weight into the hands. So hands and shoulders are taking the brunt of the upper body weight as we take our toes out a little bit over our knee, a little bit out over our second, third toe. Good, and then bring it back, stack it firmly, right over the ankle, and then both knees back. Have a seat on your heels for just a moment. Good, so keeping the, the toes are turned under and you're sit, seated on your heels, I want you to then walk your hands out. So some people call this puppy pose instead of downward facing dog, they call it puppy pose. But I want you to reach your arms out, look forward. If you're not inverting, you can just stay here for a moment, looking gently between your thumbs. If you are inverting, go ahead and reach forward, place the forehead on the floor. Keep the hips moving back toward the heels. Wherever you are is perfect. And then everybody gaze forward between the thumbs. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders and then just press up for a moment. Good. And some wrist circles, both directions. Good. Excellent. 
And now we're going to go back to all fours. So ready? Wrist underneath your shoulders. Your hands are completely in front of your shoulders. And let's take again our left leg right in front. Good. And this time begin by pressing the weight into the hands. And you can always put blocks underneath your hands here if you'd like. That'll give you a little bit more height and make this a little bit more accessible to anyone who that first time it was challenging. But press into your hands, your shoulders, your arms. And then slowly, this time first, take the knee out toward the second and third toe. Don't go past it, just toward it, over on top of it. Bring it back, stack it. And then this time, taking your hips back behind you. Just notice. And this time, we're going to keep walking back. You, are, you walk with your blocks and come onto the heel. Flex your toes toward the ceiling. So perhaps your right sit bone is on your right heel. Good. Press into the hands. Press into the blocks. Keep your spine long. Don't collapse. Foot is flexed. And then walk your hands or blocks back. One more time, knee right over the ankle. And then let the knee go a little bit forward, press into the hands though, not any pressure in the knee. The knee does not want to go past the ankle. The ankle creates stability. And then bring it back and release it. Good, you can just keep your hands on the blocks or on the floor, wherever you are. And then taking your right foot again, out in front, okay? Good, settle that knee right over the ankle. And then press into your hands and arms and slowly take the knee a little bit out over the second, third toe. Feel the stretch in the back leg, the back leg, the groin is where we're stretching now. And then bring the knee, reset it. And then we're gonna lean back. Walk your blocks or your hands coming back. Initially, keep the toe down, keep the toe down toes down, and then taking your hips back toward the heel. You may even sit on it, flex the foot. Foot is flexed toward the toes or toward the ceiling. Good. Just notice the hips, the shoulders, everything is working. Great, and then walk yourself back one more time. Stack the knee over the ankle. And then that little bit of just letting the knee go over the second and third toe while your weight is pressed into your hands and feel it in the back groin, left leg groin. Okay, restack. And then again, placing the knees together, coming up onto your knees. Great. Let's take the arms out to the side for a minute and do some curls with the wrist, both directions. Let's add the elbows, other direction. Good, and then let's add the shoulders. So shoulders, wrist, elbows, as if you were salsa dancing, just a little bit of movement all the way into the arms and hands, fingers. Dig the fingers into some deep bear fur. Just dig in with the fingers. Good, and then again, sitting back on your heels. Excellent. If you have a block handy, just go ahead and grab it and place it over right beside your thigh, okay? Right beside your left thigh. Good. Make sure you have some of your low back curve. You're sitting up onto your curled under feet. <laughs> you can always put a blanket or a pillow in there between. And this is, the block is right beside your thigh. Good. So, Exhale down from the belly button all the way down. And as you inhale, keep looking at me and just turn your sternum a little and put your right hand on the block. Exhale back. Inhale. Let the breath begin to inhale and you resist against it with a twist. Put the hand on the block and exhale back. Just keep looking in front. Don't take your head to the twist yet. Inhale. Exhale back. And this time we're going to stay for a breath or two. Inhale. And let your chin go all the way out over to the left side. You can take it over your left shoulder should you want. And then slowly 
Arching your chin up toward the ceiling, take the chin over the right shoulder and then release the twist. Good. And then lay your toes out for a moment, maybe sitting on your heels. You can make a little basket with your toes touching and your heels to the side, or you can sit right on the heels in Vashasa, whichever is most comfortable. You can always plop a pillow between your thighs and your calves. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're also gonna curl those toes under again. So if, if your toes were very sore after doing that or felt a lot of pressure, you can always put a blanket or a block underneath your ankles on the front side, okay? Good, so let's come up again. Curl the toes under, that's comfortable. You can always just put a block right underneath your ankles if you'd like. Good, and then sitting back, the block is right beside us on the right side. Good. Take a nice inhale and exhale from the belly button down. That doesn't move at all. And as you inhale, rib cage twist. Just touch the block. Exhale, return. Inhale, start the breath first and then twist. Exhale, return. Inhale, twist. Exhale, return, and inhale, twist. And this time, go ahead and look all the way out to the right side. And then if you'd like, you can take your chin over your right shoulder. And then arch the chin up over your left shoulder. And then release the twist. Good. Excellent. And coming up again, lay the toes out for a moment. Press into the tops of the feet. Press the tops of the feet firmly into the floor. If you have your block, put it on your ankles. Just lay it right across your ankles and take your sit bones back to the block for just a sec. Good. And then coming up, we're going to come up all the way to standing. All righty. Coming up nice and tall. Good. So for just a moment, we're going to just take steps forward and back. That's all we're going to do is take a step forward and back. Okay. It's, it's, it sounds a lot easier than it might be. Okay. So find your Tadasan. Your feet are hip width apart. That does not mean where your hips are out to the side. It means right underneath your anterior superior iliac spine. So right underneath those little protrusions in your pelvic basket at the top. So wherever that is, and we're gonna stay on train tracks as we go forward. I have my blocks there, I might use them later, but for now, we're just gonna step, okay? So take an inhale, we'll start with the left side. Exhale, left leg forward. Inhale back, left leg forward. Inhale back, left leg forward. Inhale back, good. Right leg forward, inhale back. You can bend the knee a little, right leg forward, stay on your train tracks and back. Right leg forward and back, okay? So if you have blocks, go ahead and place them out in front of you, past where your feet went probably, okay? Good, nice and, nice and, Flexible, feel like you're about to do some Tai Chi. So you're not tense here, right? Just let things go for a moment. Good. So we're train tracking again. Take a nice inhale. Exhale, left leg forward. Good. Bend the knee a little, just bounce a little. Back heel is up. Straighten the front leg and come forward. If the blocks are there, great. If they're not there, you might after you might just stop for a minute, pause, run, get a chair, and put the chair right there. Okay. Good. So hips are back, hips are even, and this is happening. The fold is happening at the left hip, top of the thigh. Good. Breathe. Excellent. Bend your knee a little, stack it right over the ankle. 
and then press up and back. Good. Second inhale. So if you thought the chair would be better, just go grab a chair and put it right in front of you, okay? Second inhale. And as you exhale, right leg forward, good. Back heel is up, completely up. Front knee is bent so far. And then straighten the front leg. Back heel stays up for now. And then from that hinge right at your right hip, coming forward. Try to make the spine long. No big curve, your low back curve stays. You don't push out the spine toward the back. Good, breathing. You can just look at the floor. Excellent, and then bend your right knee a little. Come up, right knee is stacked over the ankle. Take a nice inhale and then exhale back. Great, okay. So let's step the feet apart for a moment. And we're gonna externally rotate the left leg. And we're gonna move into a regular triangle pose. So I want us to notice that our right heel, I'm sorry, left heel, runs right back to our right arch, or maybe the ball of the, the, ball of the big toe. Okay, but it, wherever it is, it's headed in that direction so that you have your hips all even. And then let's lean until we get a diagonal line. The bottom side stays as long as the top side. There's no collapsing here. If you want a wider stance because you want to go close to the floor, be my guest, but you're just going to make it more challenging. But whatever you'd like to do, good. So noticing your hips, noticing your, the placement of your feet, then release the arm, but don't collapse. Fingertips pointing toward the floor and then stack the other arm up toward the ceiling. So I want us to see that we're open. We're, we're against a plane here. Everything is open. Our whole body is open over our externally rotated left leg. Good. And the feet, the train track now goes from ankle uh, and foot of the left foot back to the arch of the back foot. Okay, take an inhale and then let's exhale up. And release. Bend the knee slightly, unrotate, and then let's go to the other side. Good. Same thing, make sure, look at your heel, head back to the arch or maybe the big toe knuckle of your back leg. Hips are open. This whole thing is open. You don't feel any crease at all there. You feel the crease here on the outside. Good. And then we're gonna lean until we find that diagonal line and your bottom arm, your bottom side, your ribs, everything stays as long as the top side. We're not collapsing in there, but you're welcome to release the arm. Fingertips pointing toward the ceiling, activate the arm. Left arm up toward the ceiling, fingertips reaching toward the ceiling. And notice the openness of your whole body, a tadasan right over an externally rotated right leg. You may need to kick your left heel out a little bit to give you that equilibrium. Good, and on our next exhale, let's just come up. Release the arms, unrotate. Good. And then I want you to go ahead and rotate over to the left side again. So I want us to notice that when we're doing triangle, it's this open, open spot, spot here, okay? But when we start to work in a moment on our reversed triangle, our legs and our hips are in the opposite structure okay so here we have open hips now i'm going to go toward my chair that's there for a moment so now i'm going to actually roll my hips i'm going to press into my back foot roll my hips up and look for those train tracks that we had right here so no longer and i may have to move my heel of my left foot 
no longer is it even. So now I'll on train tracks to the side, okay? So why don't you set yourself up like that? Be on your train tracks to the side and you can move on your mat differently. I have two mats, so it's a little easier. Good. And then I want you to think about whatever you might need to place that back right foot comfortably on the floor, probably at about a 45 degree angle because your hips are staying square to the left side. Straighten the left leg. So we're feeling like we were when we were reaching forward, but now our hips are even. So there is no openness on either thigh. And from that hip crease on both legs, we're starting to feel a crease. Left leg is creasing fully and the right leg is a small, small flexion. Good. And come up. Excellent, bend your knee slightly come out of it, see how you're not the least bit lined up in the same direction for your regular triangle. And then let's externally rotate the right leg. And we're gonna take the whole left side over there and move the left foot in the back until we get on those train tracks to the side, train tracks to the side. Keep the heel up initially until you know that your pelvic basket is aligned. Great. And now we're gonna jump, we're gonna like lift up and put that left foot comfortably on the floor, wherever it is, it's comfortable. So at about a 45 degree angle, and then everything is moving in this direction. So move your hips, move the whole of the left leg as a whole, do not torque your knee. So if you need to move your ankle, move the whole leg from the hip, not from your knee. And again, now we're gonna head forward. Wherever you get to is perfect. Don't worry about pressing into anything. I'm just gonna rest my hands on my back right now, just holding gently to my back. Pelvic floor is very engaged, belly is very engaged, your breath is in your chest. Low chest, low ribs, medium ribs, not high ribs. Good. And then bend the knee, come up a little, almost a warrior one if we were to take our arms overhead. Good. And then straighten the leg and let's just walk ourselves back to neutral. Good. Wiggle your hips. Great. And stay right here with your hips for a moment. So put your hands on your waist. So everything from your hands, which is holding onto the top, just rest your hands on the top of the pelvic basket. And then slowly take your torso, but keep your legs like they are. Take your torso and you can walk your arms around a little bit out to the left. And exhale, bring it back. And then walk your torso, keep everything below stable. Walk your torso a little bit out to the right. Good, and bring it back. Excellent, okay? And then heel toe, bringing it together. All right, so when we go this last time, we're gonna work into our reverse triangle, which is a pyramid pose, which is what we've been doing with a twist, okay? And I'm gonna use a chair right there on the long end of my mat. So you're welcome to grab a chair if you'd like. Good. So let's step the feet apart initially. And I'm having us do this little hop the foot out so that we really see that if we're in a class and we're trying to go from a triangle into a reverse triangle and we don't move our feet and our legs greatly, we're gonna be so misaligned and take the torque in our ankle, our knee or our hip socket. So we really wanna be very conscientious of that. Externally rotate the left leg, bend the knee slightly, just get a slight bend on it. And then a little hop, Face your hips to the left side. Good. Heel up initially until you're sure you're aligned. Begin to straighten the front leg. Still a little tiny fold at the knee and then place the right foot down. Good. And then hinge at the hip. 
my, my chair is too far forward, but I'm gonna make it work, okay? So my hips are squared toward the short end of my mat. And I'm gonna take my left arm, and I have a ceiling here. I mean, I have a wall, so I'm gonna just reach up toward the ceiling on this wall. So this twist is added here. And if you're further down, the twist is added here. But it's pyramid pose plus a twist. Having a wall here makes it a lot easier for me to do the pose, okay? Good, come out of it, take the twist out. Come back into just our wide-legged hips coming up. Good, and then rotate and fix the legs, good. See how the difference it is? So if you just imagine being in a class and being asked to do one and then the other. So right leg externally rotated. And from here, I could go right into a triangle, but I'm not. I'm gonna open my hips all the way so I can go into my reverse triangle. So I'm toward the right, good. I'm gonna plant the back foot, still keeping toward the right, straighten the left leg and then head it down. Good. So I have a block right now underneath my left shoulder, and then I'm opening out to the right. Hips stay even. Gaze can be at the floor, at the side, or up towards your hand. Then release the twist. Come back into that extended pyramid. And then as you're ready, exhale up. Good. And back to our long stance. Wiggle your hips one last time. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And then heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, heel. Because we're going to come down into a nice big squat for just a moment. Just let your hips go down. Reach down with your hips. Poke your booty out so you get a little bit of lumbar curve. Good. And then come down to your elbows or forearms on your legs. Good. And then put your hands on the floor and come into a, a, a regular squat. Good. Your hands can stay on the floor for a minute. You can be on the ball of the foot or the heels. If your hands are not on the floor because you're higher up, just get your block and hold on to it for a moment but letting your spine take a little bit of that C curve, that embryonic C curve, resting your chin towards your chest. Good, and then peeling the chin off the chest, looking forward, take your arms and hands back behind you and then help yourself to take a seat. Good, stretch the legs out in front, Don Dawson, feet are flex. Legs are very active, upper torso, reaching toward the ceiling at a complete right angle with the body. Staff pose, like a walking stick, so firm. Rest your dominant hand on top, thumbs gently touching. Big toe knuckles are touching, heels are not touching. Otherwise you'd be in external rotation. Knees are toward the ceiling, not out at all. Good. Excellent. So we're gonna make our way to the floor in just a moment. And we're gonna do, uh, if you are inverting, if you are inverting today. So if you're not on your menstrual cycle, if you don't have glaucoma or uncontrolled eye pressure or blood pressure issues, right? So if that's the case, then you're just gonna lay down and put your legs up the wall for a little bit, legs just a little bit up the wall because I don't know your eye pressure or blood pressure issues, but just a little bit up the wall is fine, like this. Or if you know another yoga pose that you'd like to do while you're reclined, it's not an inversion, feel free to do that, okay? But for those of us who can, we're gonna come down to a bridge prep for a moment. And I want you to watch for just a second because when you get down, I don't want you turning your head to one side. So please take the time to watch now. 
while I do the pose without looking at you either, because I don't want to take my head to one side. So we're going to do three prep poses, and then we're going to come up. We're going to inhale, diagonal line, exhale, return. Keep some low back curve. Hopefully you can see, okay? So just keep a little bit of your low back curve. Inhale, up, exhale, down. Bottom on the floor, inhale, up, exhale, down. Bottom on the floor, but low back curve. So on the fourth time, you're gonna stay, and then you're gonna roll your shoulders down, make robot arms for a moment, come into this bridge pose. And then you can stay here, or today your extra challenge is to take one leg up, maybe 30 seconds, and then the other leg up, maybe 30 seconds. Make sure your shoulders are stacked underneath, okay? And then hips down, extend, and down, okay? So either are, are inversions, either doing your bridge pose is an inversion or legs up the wall. So if you're down and ready for bridge, let's start, okay? Laying down, feet are firmly on the floor, hip width apart, not wide. Your hips are not that wide, I promise, okay? So keep your feet stable and then take your arms up overhead as you lift the hips and exhale, arms down, hips down. Keep the low back curve. Inhale, arms up overhead. And exhale, hips down, arms down. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, arms and hips down. This time we're gonna come up and stay up. Inhale, arms overhead. Good, lift up. And then take your shoulder blades down your body towards your hips. Bring your upper arms to the floor. Do robot arms for a moment until you lift your sternum and stack it over your shoulder girdle. Good. And then hips are lifting toward the ceiling. You will feel that low back beautifully bent and the thoracic spine following that curve. Good. All this back bending is happening in the thoracic spine. Your low back is just doing its regular lumbar curve. Do not stack anything on top of it. Don't accentuate it. Put the back bending in your thoracic spine where it belongs. Breathe. Try one leg up. 30 seconds. Other leg up. 30 seconds. You try. Make it your pose. And if you're laying down on the floor in the supine with your legs on the wall, relax. Be conscious of your breathing. And then slowly and gently beginning to make your way down to the floor. Seeing if you need any sort of counterbalance to that pose, otherwise right into Shavasana, corpse pose. That little taste of death at the end of the practice. It requires complete surrender, fearless surrender. Peeling off the senses, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the skin. Moving inside into that smallest little spark that is you. Letting that spark grow in illumination until you are a light 
filled body. Notice the space beneath your body. Air and space are holding you. Your whole body is illuminated, soft, relaxed, complete surrender to the floor. Breath is soft and shallow, just enough to sustain. Let go. Mm, slowly and mindfully beginning to make your way into a seated posture. Take your time, go through embryo, take a big stretch, do anything that feels good. Take a minute or two and transition slowly as if you were in water through into a comfortable seated pose, but take your time, no hurry.
Once you get into the seated pose, just noticing the effect of the asana, the postures on the body, on your breath, on your mind. Just noticing. Moving into our pranayam. So make sure you have what you need for pranayam and meditation with you. If you want an extra blanket, if you want a, sc a scarf or a shawl, if you whatever you need, so that between pranayam and meditation, you don't have to move. You can just stay still and stable. So let's just notice our breath to begin with. In the belly or the chest, just taking a few regular breaths, no control at all. Just noticing where is the breath, in the belly, in the chest. The pranayama practice we're going to do today is going to involve pausing, holding the breath out and holding the breath in. So as we do this, it's a counted breath, which means it is controlled, which means it may be too fast for you, it may be too slow for you, and your goal is to make it work, okay? So this is not the time where you're just doing as you please and you're either following me or not following me. <laughs> This is the time for you to try to put your breath within that, to really practice yum, practice restraint, practice re, re, uh, holding, right? So there's no locks, there's no nothing. It's just a pause. And I'll do it rel relatively quickly. So you may have to pull in more of an inhale and you may have to push out more of an exhale than you are normally comfortable with, okay? So however that might be, we're gonna start with the counted breath. It is a chest breath in this part of the chest. So the ribs expand side to side as much as you can in that short period of time. And when you exhale, the ribs release, okay? Belly is engaged, pelvic floor is somewhat lifted so that you're supporting the breath, okay? So exhaling the breath all the way out, inhale, On inhale breath, letting your eyes flutter open for a moment. Just notice your surroundings, notice where you are. That was about 75 seconds, that whole practice. We're gonna do another one for a one minute. And if that felt left you dizzy, don't do the next one. Just sit with where you are. And otherwise, we're about to start. We're gonna exhale the breath all the way out and inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale. 
exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, you did this quick, exhale, hold, Inhale, hold, exhale, hold, inhale, hold, exhale, all the way out, all the way out, exhale out. Feeling the effects of the practice, just noticing body, breath. Mind. Sliding right into our meditation. That same spark that you saw on the floor, that same spark that is you, Holding it at the heart center as it begins to radiate out, filling your body with light. Letting the light radiate out past the body, filling your room with light. We are not our bodies. We are not our minds. Letting space, time dissolve as our lights become one light. Breathing softly with no control into the light. Experiencing the light. Breathing into the light that is beyond.
slowly and gently becoming aware of your body and the light making its way back into your body until you were fully illuminated. Inside only, the light fades away. And then as the light starts to fade within you, bring it back to the spark in your heart. Bringing your attention to the mind, manas. To the taste in your mouth. To the smell in your room. To the light flickering be behind your eyes. to the touch of your mat, your blanket, your shawl, to the sounds sitting for a moment with the sounds, the sight, the taste, the smell, the hearing, everything blended into your sensory perception into this body, this kaya. Acknowledging the body for what it is, the vehicle that takes you through your life's experience appreciating the body, the senses, the mind. Gently releasing the meditation, just letting it go. bringing your hands into your heart, Anjali Mudra. Right here, repeating again three times your sankalpa, your intention to yourself, three times. Any merit that we may have earned in our very diligent practice of yoga, we lift it up to the welfare of all sentient beings. So letting that thought of your intention slip down from your mind into your heart space, that heart brain connection. And then from your heart symbolically out into the palms of your hands and then lifting it up and letting it go off into the universe. Bringing the hands back into the heart Hari Om Tat Tat. Namaste. Okay, I'm coming to you. with one leg asleep. It, 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 I think you must find it somewhat ironic that the yoga asana teacher gets up from her meditative pose always with something almost asleep. <laughs> okay, let me fix it where you can talk. Thank you, Nayana G. Okay, hold on. Let me just fix it where you can come back and talk and then let me get rid of the spotlight and let me get you into uh, my view so I can see your beautiful faces if you allow me. Great. 
Uh, good morning again, everyone. Some of you came in after I went back, and so I wasn't sure who was there. Thank you, Meryl. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. I'm glad you liked the triangles. Very different triangles, right? That's the that's what I wanted everybody to experience. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kirti. Thank you. Um, so any questions about, we did, um, that was fast speed, um, seeing the difference between those two completely different uh, orientation poses that in our mind, because they're both called triangles, we often uh, link together and some teachers link those two together when really it's not great for a beginning student to have to, to deal with that mentally and emotionally. So um, how was that for you? How was it the distinction? And how was the warm up? Did it prepare you for it? Because I really tried to do plenty of, uh, of flexion at the hip and ex extension of the legs and extension of the spine and twisting and hoping I was taking you to a place where it made it comfortable. Everybody felt relatively comfortable this morning. Yeah. Yeah. I I have a question. Yes, the, Sylvia. The one that the triangle that we did today, I've heard it uh, being named also a, as pyramid pose. Is but with both feet parallel. So I just wanted to know. Both what, feet are parallel. They're on train tracks. Pyramid is always on train tracks. Yeah, but you have the back foot in a little bit of an angle uh oh no you you can't do that without okay. a lot of hip problems to that back hip the heel can be up which means that they are completely on train tracks the heel can be up but if you take that if you try to just take the heel down straight you're going to be in really bad knee issues really okay. bad knee issues okay thank you, you have to externally rotate a little bit that leg and that yeah. happens with the hip not at the knee other, that's a great pose for people to really screw up their knees. Yeah. And so pyramid pose is not a reverse triangle. Reverse triangle is pyramid pose with a twist. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's what reverse triangle is. Pyramid pose with a twist to the opposite side. So pyra triangle is here in pyramid pose plus the twist turns into reversed triangle. Oh, I got it. I was confused with that. Thank you. Yeah, so that's why I wanted to take it one by one so that you could sort of see like here's triangle. And you know, I could have taken it a lot broader and it would have looked more like what you're used to seeing, but most of us aren't that broad. And I don't think that's a great place for us to start and encourage our students to do it because it requires so much more leg and core strength to do it like that. So I did it at a relatively, what I thought was a stable position so that you could move back and forth because your legs are completely different in those two poses. Yeah, anybody else? Because let's clarify that. <laughs> Any, anybody else, any, any question or thought about it or anything to add how it felt for you? Okay, I have a question. Yes, Kirti. Uh, actually, I just fell down last year and I, you know, hurt my shoulder, right shoulder, rotator. It just has some tendon tear. And so I can't put pressure on my right shoulder when I press down for cat and cow pose and all other poses, mm -hmm. which have shoulder. So what should I do to lessen my you know, shoulder pressure for any- That's a energy? great question, Kirti. Mm -hmm. And I can totally relate to you. I had a, I had a frozen shoulder. Uh, okay. It's been two mm -hmm. years ago. I can totally relate. It took me about, mm, I think about six or seven months before I had relatively okay range of motion, but it took me over well over a year before I had what I call full range of motion, well over a year, maybe a year and a half. But what I did was a lot of somatic movement. So there is a woman, I don't know if you have a place to where to write down. Oh, okay. I can have it back. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> 
Yes, it's her name is Susan Koenig, K-O-E-N-I-G, Susan mm -hmm. Koenig. And she teaches somatic movement, which is very much relating to getting your brain to reprogram how it works with that shoulder, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very slow, gent and I did it for the full year. <laughs> It's mm -hmm. very slow, very gentle movement, and you can just work on the shoulder. You, you'll love her. I, she's um, she's not a, a, a young, uh, skinny. She's just a regular person. <laughs> and uh, she just look for her. She has a YouTube channel, and we're okay. looking for anything to do with shoulder, right? Anything at all to do with shoulder. Thank you, Jasmine. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. But yes, Kirthi, and you, I think you'll like her. And there's another woman, Martha Peterson, um, that does somatic movement. But I like Susan's practical way of working a lot. I like I okay. like her a lot. Okay. I will, I will. And it will Thank take you. a while. But if you don't do it, you're going to be really sorry. So you just have to work every day, every day on that shoulder. Every single it's, day. it's almost a year, you know, I just fell down last October. So it's almost a year. And I just got MRI done only two weeks back. Uh -huh. And they told there are two tears and I don't know if it can be done by surgery. They're not sure. So I'm if you would, if you'll just work with somatics to get the movement back the way that your brain connects to the shoulder, mm -hmm. you're going to be so much better off. And then you'll know whether it's because right now the, the message is don't move. That's the message because your body felt that pain and really doesn't want to feel it again. So the mm -hmm. message is we're not moving the shoulder. So mm -hmm. you have to retrain the brain to that shoulder and that shoulder to the brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And somatic okay. movement is the very best thing to do that. So try okay. Susan Koenig. Uh -huh. Thank you. You're Thank so you. welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks for the comment about the claps because I didn't really realize that. So I think someone said that when I clap that it thinks that it's outdoor sound or whatever is going on and uh, it gets registered. So maybe I should just count and not clap. Okay, perfect. Yeah, it's really helpful. Okay. Uh, Kanalesh, I have two questions that are a little off topic. Um, the book that you recommend a couple of classes ago was from James Nestor. Yes. Breath. Uh huh. Um, I was listening to a podcast uh, that they were doing an interview with him, and he said two things that I thought they were a little that I wanted to double check. <laughs> One was about meditation and he said that he was talking about breath and he said like he, that meditation is great and all, but he truly recommends just breathing because he, I might be um, changing it a little bit what he said, but um, that the breath, that he doesn't know of any meditation that doesn't have breathe deep, uh, deep breathing, but that's not accurate, right? Okay, I was pretty sure about that. And the second one is he said, um, oh, it's slipping my mind. Let me. <laughs> if you come back to it, that's fine. You can. Okay. Yeah. And jot it down and put it close to your computer. Oh, I, oh, yeah. I got yeah. it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, that asana really is like the movement is just really of yoga. What we in the Western world call yoga, just the movement is just a real. Uh, modern invention and yes he says vinyasa flow that is very recent but the movements he said is just like one or two hundred years ago but there's the the books talk about the movements also right just very different or not no 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 he's talking about like all the movements from one to the next like mostly back in the day a teacher might give you one or two poses to work on you just worked on those poses because it just, for example, like Kirti, I would give her two things to do for her shoulder, period. <laughs> so a lot of times they were used very therapeutically. It wasn't until like uh, much later that started linking movement and other movement and other movement. They were all just making someone be able to sit in asana. But what happened with many of the, um, sit in an asana, sit in a seat that was comfortable for pranayama and meditation, right? But because it had so many beneficial side effects, 
they started putting things together a lot more. Surya Namaskar is only a couple of hundred years old. Yeah. And Chandra oh, okay. Namaskar. Is a, and Ch Chandra Namaskar may even be more recent. But Babaji gave us like about 10 series, 10 different series that um, like Surya Namaskar, Chandra Namaskar, the forgiveness series, uh, the Boo series, which means earth where you're doing and doing a somersault and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> He gave us a bunch of different series that for, and some of them particular to, to age groups, ones that are good for certain ages, you know. Um, so I think the series are great. I mean, the movement is great. I think it, it has so many wonderful side effects, but, but ancient times, they didn't like link them all together. It was like, you might go into a pose for meditation. You might go into headstand for meditation and stay there for your two hours. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, anybody else? Anything else? Nice hanging out with you. Cam, Surya Prakash, Jean, Alfredo, Sandra, Tina, Steve's iPad, whoever that is, it's nice to have you there. And Sylvia, thank you. Both Sylvias, my Guatemala Sylvia, my California Sylvia. <laughs> okay, so... Um, I'll see you hopefully next Tuesday. And then I'm going to even do it on uh, Christmas Eve morning because I think that would be a great way to start a Christmas Eve. So, okay. Looking forward to seeing everybody next week. Okay. Much love. Much love. Have a great one. Ciao, ciao.